Okay, I just wanted to do a quick update on the Magnavox here. Um, have not gotten any further with it. Uh, I'll tell you uh, what I do know. We did get the new tube, and that didn't solve the issue. Uh, I did want to get in and change that 470 picofarad in there, or at least test it, and that, that capacitor is fine. And it's awful, awful tough to work on the back side of the board here with the cabinet and everything, so this is just going to come out of here. So there's something in the circuit that just, the tube is not conducting, basically. And what I did find and, and use, I also substituted the output transformer using the, the heat kit here. T3, this is the Heathkit T3 Visual Aureal Signal Tracer. And thanks to the, uh, the benefits of the web today, I was able to download the manual and it does have the banana jacks on the front for substituting the output transformer. And I've gone ahead and just uh, attached some wires and we, I think I pulled the, either the plate lead or the B plus lead off the output transformer and uh, tested it using this so it's not the output transformer nor is it shorted to the case or to either side so um, I'm guessing one of the one of the capacitors one of the electrolytics I did jump across them but I may have to clip one end of them and remove them and it's, it's just two close quarters in here with the soldering iron and everything and I'm afraid of melting uh, touching or uh, grazing any of the wiring in there so we're gonna pull this chassis out and I'll tell you why this arrived in the mail the other day. This is the uh, replacement CRT for the Magnavox. So as soon as we get sound and we have to take the uh, cabinet out to clean it anyway, um, we might as well put this one in. And I'll have one to test with on the bench. So this is a 19 BTP4. And this is new old stock. And it came from the early television organization museum or whatever. So this was a donation. But it was fairly fairly reasonably priced and uh, it's a new old stock it's a new old stock CRT it's been tested and uh, we'll, we'll install that in so we'll have a, a fine picture on the Magnavox uh, and I'll show you some other items we picked up Okay, I went to the tail end of a ham fest uh, yesterday, and uh, it was a two-day event, and I went on the second day, which was Saturday, and I was able to, uh, I just basically went for a look around, never knowing what you might run into or see. So um, I'll show you some of the things we picked up and why. Uh, I really only spent a few dollars. I went to pick up some capacitors, some high-voltage caps here for future projects and uh, I stumbled upon this thing on the ground this is really the only thing I, I paid for um, it's an RCA let me get the model number correct SHF-8 and it was on the ground and uh, I don't know where the price tag went oh there it is on the floor it was uh, it was labeled two dollars which is a, a crime in any in any venue because uh, it's such a nice nice unit all, all it is is dirty really it's um, it still has the plaque that usually falls out under the lid and in fact you can see it's loose it uh, it has a stereo cartridge in it yet this was right at the onset of stereo so I'll explain over here you have the uh, this phono stereo switch here which basically after looking at the schematic it tells you that uh, the phonograph you slide it up to here and it plays through its amplifier and speaker but stereo would mean it's just a speaker extension and over here I have the SAMS on a similar model for the amplifier and what I want to show you what baffled me a little was over here it's a it's a 50 C5 set up and push pull with a 12 AX7 as the uh, phase inverter and the uh, preamp. You flip that around so you can see. Now what, what threw me with the stereo mono switch here is that the um, when it's in stereo it's nothing more than just a, a speaker cabinet and when it's in normal it, it acts as a phonograph. So there's your 12AX7 phase inverter for the push-pull and the preamp 
for the cartridge. And I think this only shows a monophonic cartridge, but it has a stereo one, perhaps a replacement that's been bridged. Anyway, I did find this jack in the back. And I didn't know what it was at first, but it's the quarter inch jack that would be for the uh, using this as an extension speaker because stereo was just again just coming of age there so basically I just wiped this a little bit and it, and it comes clean it's really just dirty the platter has been off and it's missing the uh, thrust washer on top of the bearing there is no washer on top of the bearing so that'll we'll have to get a hold of a thrust washer for this um, the pickup generally doesn't seem on the gram uh, on the gram weight uh, too terrible. I don't know if this tractor, this was the one that some of the early ones tracked about eight grams. I don't know what this one tracks at at the moment. I'll have to get back to you on that. So the cabinet was in good shape. The player is fine. It's just uh, just a little soiled. I, I, it included the 45 adapter and, uh, and whatnot. So this had to come, this had to come with us. That's the RCA SHF8 from 1958 I would say then moving on uh, we have this thing this the next items were just in the in the pile of at the free bins that people were just tossing it towards the end this uh, caught my eye a little bit the little diamond on off volume control and the purpley blue power light this is a web core looks like a homebrew amplifier it has a 12ax7 driver there for the preamp it has input here, high and low. That's your output transformer to speaker, to the speaker jack here, and it runs on two 12 AB5 in push pull. 12 AB5. This tube was missing, was rolling around in the bottom. So we have two 12 AB5 outputs, power transformer, filter capacitor. I'm guessing it's a 5Y3. No other identification on it. But except for the tubes are web core, so it either came out of a, a tape recorder or a phonograph. I'm guessing a phonograph. And they've gone ahead and added the uh, on-off volume switch and some some venting on the sides that look like old uh, Armstrong ceiling panels. So uh, we may just keep this the way it is for nostalgia purposes. That's a pretty good sounding amplifier I'm sure. Moving on uh, some other things in the scrap were it's this item over here it's marked 6 volt. I noticed the uh, vibrator in the socket and it has a Stancore transformer 138013 date coded 1955. It had a tube socket but I don't know what tube that would have been. Some sort of rectifier I would imagine. And what caught my eye on this was the, uh, I believe this is the Amphenol socket. I was trying to find a, uh, I was trying to find the cover for this, and they're quite expensive online if you go to try to buy one because I wanted to make a harness for the test jig for the color TVs. So um, a convergence extension, whatnot. But uh, that's what caught my eye. It says 6 volt, and on the back it's only labeled B plus filament ground and hot A. B plus filament ground and hot A. I don't know what kind of voltages would be coming out of this. You put six volts into it, maybe you get some B plus and filament voltage out of it. And then again, we can look up the transformer at some time and see what that is. Uh, this is just a crappy intercom. I'll only take it for the uh, the early transistors, maybe for a radio project in the future. This was a, uh, no, this was another, not an intercom, an automatic tape recorder activator. The uh, the knobs are good, and the uh, it's got a Mauser 100K pot there. The lead the leads are off, but that's not a big deal. And this higher power rheostat uh, type control here could use could be used for a speaker, a speaker volume control. Another thing in the bin was uh, in the pile was this ICO EC900 power supply, which is nothing more than it looks to be a low voltage DC regulated AC cord here, transformer, uh, rectifiers, and a couple filter caps, and a transistor which has no 
no numbers on it, but we could test it whether it's NPN, PNP, and figure out if we have a need of replacement. But this could be a nice little low voltage power supply. Uh, moving on, we found the channel master. It's not pretty. It looks like it was actually someone tried to melt the cabinet together to hold it but they ended up using duct tape and it's an early Japanese ran on no battery cover ran on six D cells channel master I'm gonna put this a uh, early 60s solid state model so I've gone ahead and hooked up the six volt uh, power supply here to it and uh, I was listening to it uh, just last evening so it was playing it doesn't pick up many stations, but it does work. It does. It does go down the dial. It, it, last night was a little better reception, but you could probably get two stations here this morning. That's a good tone to it, though. Complaining too much weather is obviously a factor that we in the golf business have to deal with. Uh, but it has been challenging. This radio has to be over 40 years old. Solid state. Six transistor cordless. So that was a kind of a fun thing to play with. And last but not least, uh, this I took basically for the tube sockets. I don't know. I may offer this up for sale. Maybe someone can get some use out of it more than I can. Uh, it has a Jensen mini speaker in there. But this is the Heath kit. GW42 was an early, it was an early CB transceiver, but someone has gone and converted it, it says, to 10 meter ham. They've added a toggle switch here, and they've, this is just for show, and they've added this VFO mechanism here, which is a variable capacitor that when you turn here, it turns this dial on the front. So they've taken the tone squelch switch out and added this. I, I would wonder if this actually broadcasted or not. It says 10 meter ham on it, but someone has gone and taken the vibrator and the tubes and what, except one tube out of it. And this also ran on standard house power or um, it looks like 6 or 12 volts here. Yes, it would run on 6 volts, 12 volts, or 110 AC power selector. So, um... I don't know what to do with this. Maybe someone out there could use something like this. I'll, I may, I may list this just to see what happens to it. Maybe someone out there has a matching one and they need parts for. So that's it for the uh, the Magnavox update and the finds from the the Hamfest and uh, we'll get back to things uh, momentarily. Thanks for watching.